So, Liam, do you think she played in the Bounds house, huh? What do you think? Ooh, big face. Hi, baby. Is she coming? Do you see her? <gasps> there she is. You see Adrian, huh? Is she coming? Yeah? What's she doing? Is she gonna put stuff in a trunk? Hello. Hi. How was class? It was good. Alright. What's going on? Oh, they asked for metal part three. Interesting. So, wait a minute now. Yes, last night they were complaining about the magic. Yeah. And the fact that Meadow was four? Yeah. Okay. And then today they want another story. Mm hmm. Okay. So, the great wide world of editing when it comes well, to creative writing classes. One of their questions last night was why were there demons? So then I gave them an explanation for why there are demons and then they're like, oh, okay, now I want to see Meadow fight a demon. <laughs> At four. At four. At four years old, they want your character to fight a demon. Okay. Nice. Well, okay, so... Um, then your upset last night was understandable. Mm -hmm. And today I'm assuming you're confused. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least you're getting feedback, right? Yes. Of course, that happens when you take a creative writing class. I don't think I like it. Why did I take this class again? Let's <laughs> see, so you can graduate in December. Oh. That's a stupid reason. <laughs> that is not a stupid reason to take a class. It really isn't. Well, so what did your arch nemesis say? That arch nemesis isn't in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know that's mean, right? He didn't want to be in the group chat. Okay. Every time, because we had to set the group chat up three times, and every time that we set up the group chat, he ran out the room. There's nothing we can do if he ran out. Wow. Okay. The joys of college life, <laughs> man. I just, just, wow. Okay. I don't want to give you people my phone number. Alrighty then. Keep it to yourself. You don't want to be our friend. We don't have to be his friend. they asked you for a matter of part three. Mm -hmm. And then I asked them, I was like, could deal with all my trauma issues that apparently I have. And they're like, if my old boy's up a demon, then yes. Say what now? You asked them like, I asked them if they could deal with all my trauma issues because apparently I have lots of those. And then one of them came back and said, if Meadow can blow up a demon. Well, the thing is about your trauma issues is that don't have any run-on sentences you your editor places your you, you place your semicolons in the proper places um, and I think their biggest issue has to do with whether or not after quotes you put a comma I was just doing what the teacher told me to do yeah Which is her style, and that's the way she wants to grade it. That's great. So I did that. Yeah. I have a completely different style, which is also acceptable. So. Well, I'm happy for you. This is a great thing. This is really good. Except they want a 
four-year-old to blow up a demon. Now, now they're they want a four-year-old to blow up a demon. That's gonna work really well. Hell, I want to see Meta blow up a demon now. How are you gonna make they that? They also one wanted work? to be a teenager too. First, I wanted to blow up a demon. They also wanted to grow up too. They wanted to grow up, and they want you to blow up a demon. Okay, so we're going to skip ahead to high school? No. No. You're not skipping her. No. Four-year-old Meadow is supposed to blow up a demon. But they also want to see Meadow grow up. <sighs> okay. So, four-year-old Meadow blows up a demon. That's and then we see her ten years later. That's a lot of stories. Man, at least they like your stuff. At least you're getting actual feedback. They don't look at you and go, "You're white. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't read your stuff." Or their descriptions of what they will and won't take can't possibly come from a Gen X female. So. Yeah, I mean, at least they're reading your stuff. So your whole, I think that's great. But we still have the guy who thinks that my magic is wrong. Okay, well, Star Wars man can keep his Star Wars magic to himself. Does he not have any idea how many universes there are, written and otherwise, that deal with magic? I mean, and, and there's the whole charmed thing. These people are old enough to know what that is, right? Yes. It doesn't mean they watched it. Well, that, no, but they know it's there. It's actually there. They have a reference to draw from. It's a TV show, so it's audio-visual. So they could at least look it up and watch it, right? Yes. He could look it up and watch it. Only for him, Star Wars is the end-all, be-all of the world. Yeah, because we were having a conversation about Star Trek, and he walks in the room, and he's like, I hate Star Trek. It's just, I hate it, and then we can't talk about it anymore because he hates it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that he hates science. But he read so much about science, and he knows so much about it. He had an issue with one of our stories because it slowed down the bullet going into somebody's brain and it actually explained what was happening. But it was too slow for him. That wouldn't happen in real life. And I thought that the author did a good job because if that little scene that he wrote actually went to TV, yeah. there wouldn't have been any like, oh, how are we supposed to make this happen? The author already did that for you. I like it when I do that. I like it when other people do that. It makes it easier. It's called exposition. Well, he knows how to do that. He just does it horribly. <sighs> C spot. C spot run. C spot run to the stormtrooper. <laughs> C spot pee on stormtrooper's leg. Oh, did I say that? Star Wars is awful, but it's not the best thing since sliced bread. Well, the original premise of Star Wars was a whole entire race of peak or evolution of different races of people that never invented the wheel. How does a society function without inventing the wheel? I don't know. It was written, we got bumped up several thousand years, and then the, what are they, the neutrinos, or the... They made everything else possible for the Jedi, because they're so special. And then the Jedi control everyone else. No, that's not the way it happens. How does it happen in Star Wars? I've seen the movies, people. I don't know, I've only seen the movies. Yeah, I know. So, but 
that weird Star Wars walk the time magic thing. I didn't understand. Well, he's referencing um, books, isn't he? Yes. Stuff that happened in books. Yes. Oh, just because it... I mean... I, but I think it's funny that my friend, he texts me and he's like, you know, as the, pre the former president of his high school's Star Wars club, that's not right. It's not called that. Oh, you're kidding. Okay, so he got it wrong. Or was he trying to explain it to you in such a way that he, he thought you would understand it? Maybe it's that because apparently I'm stupid because I like Star Trek. Star Wars is concerned, I don't know how to... <sighs> Star Wars is sort of like a Volkswagen, one of those old timey Volkswagens that you could climb inside and just sort of fix it with bubble gum and a paper clip and it was good to go, it would run. Mm -hmm. Because it's one of those stories that has major plot holes. And we just accept them. And everyone just accepts them and moves on. And with Star Trek, we don't like those. We don't like plot holes, and we're just sort of we're nitpicky about shit. That's not saying that it doesn't. They don't have that. Star Trek doesn't have plot holes. They have no, lots of plot holes. Star Trek has plot holes. They're just easier to hide than the whole entire no wheels. I mean, that was just weird. I mean, they invent these dog-like creatures with really long legs that are... What are those things called? The AT-ATs. Huh? The AT-ATs. Is that what it is? The things that they ride in and, and, and loop... <laughs> wrapped... Yeah. Rope around. That's what they are? Okay. Yes. I remember the movies, but... Uh, they're AT-ATs. And then there's another... They're smaller than the big ones. Okay. Alright. I apparently need to brush up on my Star Wars lore. Lore. Because that's what it is. It would be canon for Star Wars. You cannot set canon for Star Wars in a world that you created and made your own. Because... Does Meta watch Star Wars? No. Does she read Star Wars no. books? Does she know who... Luke Skywalker is no okay then. It's lovely people. It's just lovely. <laughs> Instead of giving Meta a little witch dolly, I could have given her a Jean Luc Picard. Hey man, yeah, that would have been cool. That would have been funny. Strictly for your class, that would have been funny. Yeah. yeah. issue of magic in different universes because Star Trek is not the end all be all. I mean, Star Wars Star Wars. Well, is there magic in Star Trek? Anyway, Star Wars is not the end all be all for magic universes and um, especially not in books because you have Robert Heinlein and Madeline Lingle and um oh Here's Anthony. There's also um, Rod Sterling and Alfred Hitchcock, and you know even Edgar Allan Poe is a little magical. So you have different elements of different things that go into creating canon for magic. Not to mention the creators of Charmed, a television show. So, when you're writing anything that has to do with magic, you can draw from any source you want to. Because it, it does exist. As long as it exists in your head, it exists. That's what being a writer is all about, right? Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure. This is supposed to come 
out of my brain and how is my thinking wrong from other people's thinking if it's not real but your thinking is not wrong that's the whole thing you can think what you want to no one can take away your right to your ideas I mean that's part of the reason I have such a big issue with people these days is they're like well it's not like mine so therefore it's wrong and that you, you can't I mean if we were all the same every single one of us were the same I don't want to be a whore resistance is futile. We will add your collective essence to our own. No. I don't like them. No. I don't like the board. Don't want to be a board. Don't want to be a sheeple. It's, it's a sheeple. Don't want to be a sheeple. <laughs> that goes into the um, questionnaire. You remember I was talking to you about because we were in Target and that girl said she liked your shirt and you had the monsters on there. Yeah. And didn't she say, um, was she the one who asked you if Lily was your favorite character or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I asked her if she liked the, the monsters or the Adams family better and did she know who the Adams family was? She said, was? I like the monsters better than the, the other family. I don't even remember their name. It's like, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's just weird. I mean, Grandpa, Grandpa used potions, and he was a... He was a vampire. He was a vampire, so he like was the count. He was my favorite. Yeah, so... is physics. If you, you really want to talk about time magic, that's physics, is it not? Yes. So but I wasn't talking about going back in time. No, you're talking about pausing it. But apparently you can't do that. Alright, well my characters do that. Do I need to go into a whole entire explanation of she's not technically pausing it. She's slowing down the molecules so that the human eye can't see them moving. Apparently, yeah, you need a whole explanation on exactly how time spells work.